Today we're going to talk about the physical properties of minerals. Yesterday we talked about minerals and we said that they each mineral has consistent physical properties, meaning that the physical properties of that mineral will stay the same and they can also those physical properties can be used for identification to determine which mineral is which. Um, you just saw a little bit of that in the brain pop video. We're going to talk about four physical properties of minerals. So we're going to create a four door foldable. So if you take the piece of paper you picked up when you walked in, fold it in half, hamburger style, and just make a little mark where the middle is. And I'm sorry, it keeps going out of focus. If you open it up, we're going to fold the right side in to our halfway mark. And then we're going to fold the left side in to our halfway mark. And then fold that down. So this gives us our two doors, but since we want four, we're going to need to cut each of these doors in half. So if you kind of just eyeball where the middle is, you're going to take some scissors and you're going to cut only the top part so that you're creating the flaps. You're going to cut that piece in half on the left side and on the right side. Now mine is not perfect. If yours is not either, that's okay too. Okay. But if you see now we have one, two, three, four doors. Okay. So the first property that we're going to talk about should sound familiar from when we talked about the physical properties of elements, when we talked about metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. And that is called luster. So I'm going to write that on the top right section. Okay. And remember, luster has to do with how an object reflects light. So think about whether it's shiny or not. So I'm going to draw some lines around my word. So on the inside, we're going to define it. Okay, we said we know that luster is the way the surface of a mineral reflects light. The way the surface of a mineral reflects light. Now we're going to start talking about how we test each of these properties. Starting tomorrow and next week, you will actually be performing these tests. So over on the outside part of the flap, we're going to write to test. Testing the luster is pretty simple. If we need to see how does the surface of the mineral reflect light, we just need to know, um, we need to put, the, put it under a light source and decide if it is metallic or non-metallic. So to test, observe mineral under light source. That could be the lights in the room, or you could put it under a lamp, as long as you're not looking at it in the dark. Now remember that it can be either metallic, which is shiny, or it can be non-metallic, which is not shiny. Sometimes we can be more specific when we're talking about minerals, and if it's non-metallic, it can also be called dull, silky, or glassy, okay, depending on how it looks. And we'll, when we actually start testing, we will look at a little bit more um, detail on what those terms actually mean. Okay. The second property that we're going to look at is color. So we are going to go down right underneath where we had luster, okay, and we're going to write color. Now color is um, a property that we've discussed before, and it's um, 
pretty obvious, a common word we would know. It's really what, what color is it? Is it reddish? Is it more black, white? So um, color is just using the same colors that we already know. If you open up this part, okay, on the inside, we're gonna put the description. Again, color is simply the color of the surface of the mineral. Now, unfortunately, color is not the best indicator, um, the best physical properties for identification. We'll talk in a minute about one that's even better, because sometimes um, different minerals can share the same color, or one mineral, for example, quartz that we looked at yesterday, that can have a variation of colors. So um, testing the color is pretty simple. So on the left side, we're gonna say to test similar to luster, look at the surface, that's the outside, look at the surface of the mineral in a well-lit area. Again, we don't want to be looking at it in the dark because colors can appear differently depending on the amount of light. Now I mentioned that color is not always the best indicator or the best physical property to use for identification because again, sometimes um, the color can vary, but there is a property called streak that is similar to color, but it is more accurate when it comes to identification. So I'm gonna write that word at the top right hand section of our foldable, okay? The word is streak, S-T-R-E-A-K. Okay, and that's like a streak with my marker. Streak is actually the color of the mineral in powdered form. So it's not just looking at the surface. It's if you actually broke it down to a powder. So we're gonna write on the inside of that, of that flap the color of the mineral in powdered form. Now to test the streak, we don't actually have to break each mineral down into powder. There's something called a streak test where you basically take the rock and, or the, excuse me, the mineral and make a streak on something called a streak plate and the color that's left behind is the color that the mineral would be if it was in a powder, because it's really what's, that's the residue or the powder that's being left behind on the streak plate. So we're gonna write those instructions here off to the side again to test rub the mineral on a streak plate. Now a streak plate, it really just looks like a piece of tile. It's actually a piece of porcelain, um, unglazed, so it's not shiny. It's just flat and dull and smooth, so it's easy to see the color of the streak. And like I said, tomorrow and next week when you actually start doing these tests, you'll be able to see what the streak plate looks like and actually be able to um, perform the streak test. The last physical property that we are going to look at today will go on the bottom right hand corner of our foldable it will focus and that is going to be called the hardness h-a-r-d-n-e-s-s -S. 
Now the hardness is just like it sounds. How hard is the mineral? It um, could be soft or it could be easily scratched or marked on or it could be considered to be more hard where it's unable to be scratched. Um, and so scratching is really how we measure the hardness. So if we open it up, open up this flap, <clears throat> we can define the hardness as how resistant a mineral is to being scratched. To test the hardness, we use something called the Mohs Hardness Scale. It's named after the scientist Friedrich Mohs who came up with this. And it's a scale from one to 10, where one is the least hard or soft, and 10 is the most hard. And what he did was he put um, some particular minerals, like yesterday we looked at gypsum and calcite, we talked about fluoride and your toothpaste, all the way up to diamond. We know that diamond is a very strong mineral, it cannot typically be scratched. And so what he did was he came up with everyday common objects that have the similar hardness. And so in, when you do this test, you basically take something like your fingernail and you try to scratch the mineral. And if it does scratch, it would fall somewhere in this range. If it doesn't, you would go to the next item. Take a penny. If it can be scratched with a penny, it has a hardness of about three. If it can't be scratched with a penny, you move on to something else. You could use a file or a glass plate, and then you keep going, and if nothing can scratch it, um, then we would say that that's about as hard as a diamond and has a hardness of 10. So tomorrow and next week, we'll talk about using the Mohs scale. This is what we're talking about here. It's a relative scale of hardness from one to 10. So on the right side, of this flap, we're going to write to test, and we'll put a summary of what I just said. Use a variety of objects, such as we mentioned the penny, the fingernail. to see what scratches the mineral. This is kind of similar to when we did density. Um, if you determine the hardness to be three, then you would check a chart that tells you which mineral has a hardness of three. Just like when we were measuring the density of those cubes, if you got the density to be 19.4, you would go check the chart and it would tell you that if the density is 19.4 then the substance must be made of gold. So it's very similar to that. We are going to keep this foldable on page 2 in our journal in the section that we set up yesterday. So right behind our minerals notes from yesterday, if you flip the left side page will be page two. We can put a title, Properties of Minerals, and then go ahead and glue this to page two. Once you have it glued to page two, go ahead and go back to our table of contents that we set up yesterday and add this entry. Today is the 28th. Our title, Properties of Minerals, and we just glued that onto page two.